Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Nice to have you along. Of course it is Wednesday night and uh, our viewers upcountry uh, that have finally uh, managed to catch up with Cape Rugby TV now that we're on DSTV. Welcome to you as well. Very exciting show this evening and of course we will be uh, talking quite a lot about uh, former president Nelson Mandela who so sadly passed away. But I think we'll also be looking at uh, how we celebrate his life and we'll chat about that during the course of the show. We've got a number of um, tributes that of course have come in from you on Facebook. So we'll be uh, looking to share some of those tributes with you as well. On the show with me this evening, and uh, we're very excited to have him on the show, Carl Brown, the captain of the uh, Springbok 7. Hello, Carl. How's it going? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's uh, long overdue that we get you on the show. <laughs> it has been a while, yeah. I'm glad to be here eventually. Yeah, yeah and uh, I think it was an exciting weekend for you guys, huh? Very, very interesting. Very tough weekend uh, emotionally and physically, and uh, yeah. very, very proud of the guys. Yeah, we're going to get stuck into that in, in a sec or two. Chester Williams, the man who will tell us more about the 95 World Cup, winning that, what it was like to be sort of under the wing of uh, <laughs> former President Mandela. How are you, my man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, good. I'm uh, glad to be back in South Africa um, after a two-year stint in uh, Romania. Yeah, we'll ask you if you, can, do you speak Romanian now. Uh, Putin, Putin, very Putin, little. Very little yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I can say that in Japanese, very little. I think it's about the only thing one says when you pretend to know the language. Uh, and of course, no stranger to Cape Rugby TV, Herman Abrams. Hello, Mr. H. Hello, JP. How are you? Very good, man. Very good. Yeah, long last seen. Yeah, it was good. Ah, what it was. Yeah, very rustig. Yeah, you begin break gevat. Yeah, it was very lekker om weg te wees van jelle. And you, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and you'll of course be able to tell us more about. Um, that when what year was it that we did that uh, torch relay? On his 87th birthday, right? That, that was eight, the eight years or seven years. Ago. About seven eight years ago, we did yeah. a torch relay. Anyway, folks, we'll get stuck into that in a couple of minutes' time. Let's talk here about the HSBC sevens. Let's look at the results over the weekend. Uh, New Zealand um, going down to South Africa. Of course, that was in the final. Um, Samoa 21-7 over Argentina, Fiji 45-19 over France, Australia going down to England 28-19 and Canada 19-12 uh, uh, going down to Scotland. But I think the big one there obviously was South Africa winning the HSBC 7s 17-14 in the cup final. Carl, uh, with, we'll get into the details of it but um, how did it feel? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's about time that we won our, our home tournament. It's been, you know, a tough couple of years. I think the the first time I played at home was in George when uh, when we, we beat New Zealand in George, and that was also an incredibly memorable tournament for me. Yeah. Um, so to, you know, from from also being in PE two years ago when we lost in those dying seconds to to New Zealand to this weekend was really something special. You actually remember that kind of stuff. Like, I mean, if, Very it, if, much if you so. lose, <laughs> yeah. I often wonder how you guys remember all these details. You'll refer back to a game that happened in the <laughs> five years ago in the third quarter and it was in the 17th minute and you remember a certain <laughs> pass. I don't know how, how you remember these details. I'm not, I'm not sure about the players, but the coaches do remember. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> so the coaches, of it, of yeah. course, you, I suppose you put the different hat on yeah. and then the things change over time. Yeah. So, um, I mean, if we look at the day, uh, at the weekend itself, mm. it was it was obviously hugely successful. I mean, everybody's focusing on sevens now. Uh, there was a bit of speculation as to whether or not the stadium would get filled, but on that second day, it looked like you guys were chock a block. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of a worry because I mean, last year wasn't the you know the, the greatest performance uh, by the PE crowd, but they yes they rocked up this year. They were awesome this year. They were really incredible and just to. Uh, you know, our, our anthem before the final was unbelievable, really unbelievable. People, you know, that were in the stadium that were there said the absolute goosebump stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did the, was there any sense of, uh, I mean, I'm sure there was, but the, I mean, it was the Nelson Mandela Bay <laughs> in the Nelson Mandela Stadium. Um, obviously, the timing uh, was awkward, but did that bring a different type of atmosphere? I mean, this wasn't a normal game. I think it didn't. It wouldn't have really mattered where we played. You know, it was. It, you know, the whole country was in mourning from Friday morning since we woke up and, and realized what had happened. And then there was a question of whether the tournament would actually go ahead and, and happen. Um, and you know, luckily enough, it did go ahead. And um, a, a very special weekend to be part of. You know, on, on Saturday afternoon, they, at about five o'clock, they had the tribute where all the teams went out to the um, on, onto the, the field and lined up and you know, a real tribute to, to uh, Tata Madiba and, you know, the national anthem was sung and it was an incredibly, um, incredibly moving moment to be part of. And then, of course, the <coughs> as the weekend progressed, you know, I think the guys took a lot of strength from, from uh, the, the whole deal and uh, I suppose you, you could feel like there was a lot of pressure, but uh, it, was, it was great pressure. It was really something 
um, unbelievable to be part of and uh, yeah to, to to be in that final and and to you know to honor Madiba in, in, in such a special way like that it was just you know a, a great great moment when did you guys find out um, you know, obviously you, when did you arrive in PE uh, we, you know, we arrived on Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday morning what was it yeah Tuesday morning and, and yeah. we found out Friday morning I think like most of most of South Africa I think the news broke yeah. you know early early hours of Friday morning yeah. and then you know, when everybody woke up, it was you know, it was it was a cold, cold morning. And you say there was a time there that 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 possibly things people didn't know what was going to get called off, things get cancelled, the carry on as normal. Yeah, I think I think um, you know when uh, when Madiba went into hospital during the World Cup in July, there was even a worry that you know w would we compete, and you know out of respect, we, we might not have actually competed at, yeah. uh, in in Russia. Um, and and I think that was very much the same here. I mean, it's, it was you know possibly one of the biggest moments in South African history, mm. um, and you know we didn't want to take anything away from that at all. And uh, you know the, the powers to be said that we would play, and, and we played, and it turned out to be a great weekend. Let's talk a little bit about those teams that were playing, uh, and of course your counterpart or <laughs> colleague, should we call him Paul Delport, sits in in your chair on quite a regular basis <laughs> and spews forth about the the success of sevens and it's been a it's been an incredible revelation this this style of rugby uh, and i didn't really take to it in the beginning yeah. a little bit like i didn't really take to the sort of the, the shorter form of, of cricket the t20 yeah. didn't really and it seems to bite i mean it really bites and you get into it it's fast action it's one game after the after the next um it, it's what is it what's it like for you guys playing sevens I think I think for us it's all about spectator value. You know, I mean that's that's exactly what you try to create when you know when you have any event, I suppose. And and all we're trying to do is create a great weekend, a great vibe for everybody to be involved in. And um, I know that that South Africans initially they didn't really buy into it very much of the whole festival atmosphere of it being two days long. I think we we're used to you know the four hour structured hour before the test, two hours yeah. of the test, hour afterwards, and, and that's what everybody loves and that's what everybody enjoys. But um, we're slowly trying to change things. I think, uh, you know, what was the, the Cape Town 10s and the Cape Town 7s getting involved and now, you know, with the, the Nelson Mandela Bay 7s and people slowly starting to get interested into this whole thing, you know, where they can, they can watch Portugal versus England or, you know, Kenya versus New Zealand or us versus the USA. And, and, and some of these games can be, you know, a real matchup where you can see all these nations deciding, you know, listen, this is, this is the route that we can take where we can compete in rugby. And uh, yeah. it's really interesting to watch. It is real entertainment, though. I mean, <laughs> not not just. I mean, even when you guys are when, when there's a game on, you, you you see you guys run on the side of the field and yeah. you're warming up on the side. So while the one two teams are playing, there's another two teams warming up, and it's just just one thing after the next. It's all very well coordinated. It's a, it's a real spectacle. I mean, that adds yeah. to the whole vibe. That and of course the beer that's flowing. <laughs> the, I mean, what was up with these Hulk hand? Well, I wasn't there. Did you see these these? These beer mugs that were like in a in a, in a Hulk hand, <laughs> <laughs> all these guys. Were, I mean, one stage we saw Han Yanni Shimangi and and MP um, and Paul Mbizo and uh, uh, Stimbilo, which is another friend of ours, sitting in the yeah. sitting in the stands, and they were singing the, the I think Shosha Laws or the anthem, <laughs> and they were just having an absolute job. But they had these big Hulk mugs beers, and they were just going for it. <laughs> so I don't know if you saw those heads. I think I think that's what the whole weekend's about. I think I was just having a good time, you know, whether yeah. it's whether it's about the rugby or whether it's getting together with a bunch of mates and having just a lack of weekend around the whole rugby atmosphere. That's that's the most important thing. And I think the team that uh, that looked after us at brand new marketing, um, they, they did incredibly well. I mean, they had uh, DJ Socks throughout the whole day. Yeah, and Ryan O'Connor as well. Ryan O'Connor was there, and they had Crazy White Boy on on uh, Saturday evening looking after the fans. I mean, so there was there was you so know. Paulie was there. Plenty of entertainment. I unfortunately, <laughs> wasn't. You know, not the coming the crazy white boy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I, I'm sad that he actually missed it. I mean, he, he called me up on Saturday night and said how much he would have loved to have been there. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then he called me up again on Sunday night and told me how desperately he wanted to be there. And, oh yeah, um, I can imagine. You know, at a time yeah, like so that. yeah, like you say, I mean, they, they whatever they can do to create a great atmosphere for yeah. for the fans to to make it fun and entertaining. That's exactly what they do. Chesley, from a, from a coaching point of view, if you're sitting on the side there and you're watching this, are you thinking, hang on, I'm going to pick a couple of these acts for my team? You know, uh, <laughs> you obviously yeah, look at sevens as well, you know, and you think about it, um, that's almost like a develop for development for, for 15s. Yeah. But um, it has become so focused um, um, e event that uh, the players solely have to focus on sevens because um, it's a different um, way of playing, you know, um, it's excitement and 
If you really want to select an uh, open side flanker or a, of a, or a winger or a center, then they, that's where you're going to look for them. But you're not going to look for a lock or a prop somewhere there or a rooker for any argument. Some, sake. Of those, I mean, know, some of the, the um, sevens guys are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, how, how big is that Tim Mickelson guy? He's pretty tall. Is yeah. it one or two other guys? Kyle, he's, he's actually a wing in 15s. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, so that's what I'm saying. You know, do you look, think that seven you, guys are getting bigger? I mean, I know we bring Cheslin and Colby and it's oh. <laughs> half the size of the guys and twice as quick and and so on, but, but aren't the... I wouldn't say they're getting I know big. you're not going to go rec- looking <laughs> for locks there, but they yeah. are, the sevens Look, guys are getting bigger. I'll, I'll attest to the fact that they're getting bigger. I have to tackle them, so... <laughs> 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 they're definitely getting bigger. You know, just like teams like Portugal and, and, uh, and, and America and Canada are, are getting some of their most physical players in, and I think Canada is using it very much in hand, hand in hand with their 15 sides to use it uh, yeah. as a lot of growth. I think the, the coach moves backwards and forwards between the, the, the teams, and I know that the players, before they even came to Dubai, they were on a tour with the 15s mm. team. So they use a lot of their 15s players in the seventh side, and they are a hell of a physical bunch. Chester, uh, Romania, uh, you just got back from Timmy Suarez. You, you've had quite a bit of success there coaching the side. Um, the Romanians, how, how are they doing? Look, uh, the Romanian competition is uh, quite competitive with, uh, with four, four, between four teams, I would say. They have six teams in the, in the Championship League, and, um, but I must say, you know, they're quite physical and, um, and they're hungry for, uh, to, for, to, to understand and, and learn about rugby. Yeah. Um, I would say that when it comes to sevens, they're not, they're not focusing too much on, on sevens, but I would, I would say that they should actually put more emphasis on, on sevens because that will develop the players to, um, to play at, at for the national team and become a, a much better competitive side yeah. um, to the first tier countries, you know. Mm. Um, and the Romania is always it was, it's one of those teams that's been um, part of the Rugby World Cup since 1987, yeah. they played in every single rugby World Cup, or they, yeah. So they've been they've been quite good at that. And they've had some success. They beat Japan, Canada. This year they've beat uh, Canada, yeah. Japan, Japan, and also Tonga and the United States. So it's, uh, they're doing quite well. And um, they've got the new coach called Lynn. He's from uh, from uh, from Wales. And funny enough, uh, the, that coach he lost against South Africa about 100 and something the oh. last time he played here. He was the coach. It doesn't go down well on your CV uh, when you're yeah. applying for a job. But, <laughs> yeah, but uh, obviously he's, he's been doing very well with the team and uh, it's, um, it's not easy to coach them because they, 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 they question you all the time. Yeah. Even, if you're, uh, even if you prove them you're right, they still question you and you just have to um, deal with it accordingly. Yeah, let's take a look now, folks, at the uh, HSBC Sevens overall ranking and see where South Africa is. New Zealand, uh, top of the pile on 58 points. South Africa in second place, uh, ranked second. Fiji, England, Australia, Argentina, Kenya, Samoa, Wales, France, Portugal, and Scotland. No Romania there, <laughs> as Chessy just said. Yeah. But if we if we look at that, uh, uh, Kyle, uh, uh, it's two points between you guys and New Zealand, um, and I think that, that this tournament now that you won would have hauled you back a little bit closer huh? <laughs> yeah I think we've always spoken about it and we've tried to make it our motto for the season was just about consistency I mean last season we won you know the most tournaments we won three tournaments out of the nine and you know not even New Zealand won that many yeah. and they managed to win the season and it was purely based on consistency and it's, it's all about finishing in the top four of every single tournament you know it's not you know one week winning the tournament next week in the bowl or the shield yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And when, when Fiji lost that that, I mean, when you looked at Fiji during the tournament, did you get any sense? Because Paulie, <coughs> Paulie was telling us that you can see when they're starting, when they're on a like a, uh, they get a rhythm or a certain <laughs> sense of confidence, and you know that these guys are just going to, they're going to dominate. But it looked like they just didn't. I mean, when they, I think they were up against Samoa, uh, and the wheels were just starting to come off. Did you guys think, okay, well, this this team is not going to be that strong this year? Uh, unfortunately, or, I don't get to to watch too much of the rugby. Uh, Actually, I, I don't. I, I choose not to watch too much of the rugby. I kind of rest rather and kind of focus on our games ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I did, I did hear that they lost to Samoa, and, and it's, it happens. You know, it happens quite a lot with them. I mean, they come with such intensity the week before in Dubai when we played them in the final. Well, they, they, they played New Zealand in the semi-final in Dubai, and I think mm. demolished them 44-0. Yeah. It was incredible to watch. Yeah. Um, and then they came with that, you know, intense blitz against us in the final, and. Again, it was it was very difficult to play against when they're on such fire like that and on heavy form. And then, uh, you know, it just I think it might be just a bit difficult to keep up that kind of intensity yeah, yeah. for for another week. Whether it's because they're not fit enough or, or whatever it is, they they just weren't able to fire as heavy as they were the week before. Um, you got a new coach there, Neil Powell. Paul, true, of course, as a Kenya. But and 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 in the post-match interview, um, 
Neil said that uh, he, he wanted you guys to be within striking range and that was apparently your half-time chat. You needed to be within striking range at, at half-time and then you, you, you would apply a certain game plan. Uh, <laughs> when you were at half-time, and you were, I think you were behind at half-time, am, am I right? 14-12. 14-12. Yeah. Yeah. But then it was like, I don't know, you came with a new strategy. What, what was going through your mind at that time? What was the game plan? The game plan was that we're, we're fitter than them, so just keep playing. <laughs> I mean, that, that was that sense. Yeah. So there was yeah, a sense that, that you guys were the fittest team. We know that uh, New Zealand will blitz for the first five, seven minutes. That's what they do. And, and they did. They did exactly that. They scored two quick tries. But the, the thing is, if you're, if you're a mentally weak team, then they will go on to crush you. They'll beat you 40 yeah. points or 50 points, whatever it is. But if, you, if you're strong enough and you, you believe enough in your, your capabilities and your, and your confidence in your team, um, then you, know, you, just chip, you just carry on. Keep chipping away. You know, Branko scored two tries and, and pulled us close to 14-12 you know, at halftime. If we had gone into that halftime 14-0 down, then we would have been in you know, big, big trouble. Because yeah, yeah. then they would have had their tails up and they would have you know, probably gone on to the second half and held on to it. Yeah. But because we were 14-12 and you know, we just stuck to our platter and not, you know, don't get flustered by things. And then, you know, yeah, they you did look like you were very <laughs> composed I mean, the team looked like, yeah. okay, this, this is all good. And then Chesilton came on as well, scared the <laughs> hell out of everybody. <laughs> yeah, he makes people very, very nervous. He I mean, does, though. You know, if you've got a team with uh, Branko de Prier, uh, Cecil Africa, Justin Hadult, Cheslin Colby, yeah. I, I think they get confused after they don't even know where to look anymore. <laughs> and all of a sudden, people are just stepping all over the place. And so it's, it's great for you know guys like myself and Frankie and, and, and Philip who just you know get out there, do the graft work, and, and lay the platform for those guys to, to do their thing because they yeah. are unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. Cheesy. That's exactly what I wanted to say now to Kyle or to yourself is that. Um, the difference between South Africa and New Zealand is we had a very good balance between the team. That, and, and I always know, I mean, I know that our team is always fit because I know what Paul and, and Neil is like. <laughs> because I coach them myself. You know? Yeah. Because uh, the sevens team of ours will always be one of the fittest team, and New Zealand's always fit. But the difference between the two is that um, New Zealand's only got the physique and, the, and maybe the skill. They don't have the speed. Mm. Where South Africa have the speed, the skill, and the, and the physique. And that balance makes them so dangerous. And that's why they, when they have the ball in hand and they keep the ball in hand, they'll always score. Um, talking about South Africa, where New Zealand is, they will keep the ball, but if they break the line, they can, um, our players can still chase them uh, in and, and tackle them and yeah. get a turnover from there. And uh, our strength, with, uh, our strength in, the, in the final was the, uh, the tackle ball, um, slowing down the ball, or, or get a turnover ball from, uh, against New Zealand, or penalty for, uh, for South Africa. Yeah, well, let's, let's take a quick ad break, folks. When we come back, we're going to uh, touch on the life and times of uh, former President Madiba and his, uh, uh, the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, his impact that he had specifically in the world of rugby and his ability to use sport that he believed so strongly was a way to engage the uh, South African community and, and, and change the world of, of uh, change the world through sport. And of course, rugby was one of those sports. We'll be back with you after the break. Everybody welcome Cape Rugby TV, of course, Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock. Remember, you find us on Facebook on uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV and also on Twitter at Cape Rugby TV. Uh, you're a Twitter man, Kyle Brown? A little bit. Yeah. Trying to do my fair bit of social media for the, the team. Frankie's... Frankie's quite a digitally integrated guy, but I don't see him a lot on Twitter. Very, very recently, he um, he only started getting onto Twitter, I think, about a month and a half ago. So it was it was a huge push for us. <laughs> it's been <laughs> it's been five years coming now, yeah. but uh, five or six years coming, and, and eventually we got him onto to Twitter, and now he's opened up to Instagram and Pinterest. And oh really? Oh, it's, uh, he's now he's now he's all social media data. Okay, because well, I checked, uh, I think he's got like 500 followers. So. Um, Folks, this is a national sporting hero, all right? I think it's what, Frankie Horn 9, maybe? Frankie? Fra I think it's Horn Frankie. Horn Frankie, okay. So go, go, go on to Twitter, um, and it's Kyle Brown? Kyle G. Brown. Kyle G. Brown. Yeah. Um, Chesie, are you on Twitter? Yes, yes, I am. What is it? Chester MW. Chester MW. W. And Mr. H, do I need to ask you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, uh, yeah, so on Twitter, at Cap Rugby TV, Kyle G. Brown. Uh, Horn, Frankie, and of course, uh, I think it's Paul Delport Nine. So there's a number of, of, of Twitter handles out there that you can you can send out. Uh, we are going to catch up with your Facebook tributes uh, in in a while, but uh, let's let's move to um, to the the call it our, our chat or memories of President Mandela. And I think the one of the big things that that a lot, everybody focused on this year, and Chester, I, really, I want to bring you into this year is. Uh, or at least in, in the last few days, you know, there's been lots of footage and clips 
and obviously a lot of political footage of, from prison scenes and, and, and things like that. But in the, in the sporting space and even in the political space, the one thing that everybody honed straight into was that 95 World Cup. Uh, I mean, you were, in, you were also interviewed in almost all of these shots. There was you talking about the famous photograph. There was a lot of talk about the, the, the pass from yours to, 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 um, uh, uh, to Joel. And then there was a lot of interviews with Francois Pinar as well. Um, just lead us, take us through that. In, 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 and I think you were also the only black player. I don't still, do we call? Do we still call that? Yeah, do we still say that? Um, uh, you were the only black player in the team. It's obviously a difficult. It must have been a difficult time for you. Give us a little bit of your your feeling and and the lead up to the World Cup. Look, uh, I think um, Carl um, alluded to it earlier on about um, uh, how the magic of Nelson Mandela, but it's called you know, um, uh, Madiba magic. That's it, you know. Um, yeah. So wherever Nelson got involved in sport, he's uh, the success, especially for South Africans, and he's proven it throughout his his time. He's been with us uh, uh, since uh, 1995. Um, but you know, he played a very very big role with us uh, with regards to the Rugby World Cup. I think um, because of him, rally, rallied behind the Springbok team in 1995, we managed to get to hold the Rugby World Cup, and we won it. Um, so he was very inspirational for us uh, during before the Rugby World Cup uh, coming to our training sessions he would um, talk to each and everyone he would call them on their names know what positions they were playing was this now um, was this now before the World Cup that was I before mean, the World Cup at our training sessions at training session Silver Mine, yes. oh yes yeah. and uh, he would call that even um, they would go to the uh, to the tea ladies he would go and say hello to them um, so he was a really remarkable person to to that he was you know he's um, did um, you already did you already at that stage get a sense of this is bigger than just a rugby game, bigger than the World Cup. This is Mandela and the country and the World Cup. It, it was like, it was, it was, the timing was all right. Yeah. I don't think we realized that because I, we, we didn't know what was the whole um, planning or uh, the strategy of uh, Mr. Mandela at the time, you know, because uh, we were very I mean, awed to see him at the training sessions and be with us. And, uh, and as the tournament um, moved on, that, that we realized, you know, there's something bigger coming, yeah. um, especially the year by the semi-finals. Um, I th but the, the key thing was that for him to come to our training sessions, because I, th I think he knew, because he was informed by, the, by our coach, Kids, Kids Christy and Morney, how important that first game will be for us um, to win to ensure that we can have an easier way to the final, <coughs> not playing New Zealand in a semi-final. And uh, so if with his influence at the state of the field, it was really... Um, and he wasn't wearing the jersey yet. No, he was not wearing the jersey. He was in his normal Mandela uh, shirt. shirt, yeah. shirt. And um, so he's, um, when, uh, when throughout the World Cup, he was with us all the time, called, I mean, would phone us the phone and, and talk to us on the phone. Um, send messages to, to us um, and so it was it was really great for him to stand behind the team and and because of him rally behind us you know that everybody was supporting us and uh, the, the rugby world cup final you could see I mean 60,000 people in the stadium I yeah. think it was 80 at the time yeah, yeah. Um, 80,000 people so they sit there and run on the field uh, to listening to all these people so I think it was just amazing uh, an experience Tell, talk us a little bit through the final game South Africa New Zealand um, and I believe that you know, there's a lot of stories there of, before we talk about the game, just of, mm. of, of uh, um, Mandela going to see Francois Pinar um, on the side, having no, a few well, conversations with him. You know, what happened is that, uh, let me tell you this, um, um, we got on the bus and, uh, you know, normally as Carl would also tell you is that the guys get quiet, you don't talk to each other, you try to focus, everybody's having the ear, nowadays they have a head, ear, headphones on yeah. the ear, or, yeah, and they listen, earpieces yes, earpieces, earpieces earpieces and they listen to music. Those big headphones. Now, no, <laughs> <laughs> now it's even bigger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, you uh, in those days? In fact, I, I remember there was a little, <laughs> little bit. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> <laughs> and in morning Morgan hours, anyway. Yeah. And, um, so, and then Francis just stood up and said, guys, don't, I don't want anyone to be quiet. I want you to talk to each other. Even I want you to relax. And he started to play a, a song called "If You Don't Believe." If you yes, you don't believe in if anymore, something like that. Yeah. And we were listening to that. And uh, when we got to the stadium, went in the change room. All the people when the bus came to the stadium, it was madness there. We got in the change room. After like say probably like uh, an hour, we were on the field, kind of back, back to our change room. Yeah, Mr. Nelson Mandela walked into the change room with the Springbok Rugby jersey. 
you know, where in the world... And so was it on? Did he have it on? He had it on, he yeah. had it on. Where in the world uh, any president at that time yeah. would walk in a, in a change room, never mind with a Springbok rugby jersey, you know, yeah. he would come with a jacket and a tie and, yeah. and be like his normal formal yeah, attire. Yeah. attire. And uh, he walked in and we, we, we got such a fright, we didn't know what to do. We all sat still and just <laughs> look at this man, what is this man doing in the change room? And, uh, and obviously he gave us a motivational talk and uh, obviously the main thing for him was is that and we have to stand together, be one team, um, like our slogan was saying, one team, one, one country. And, and, and that's exactly what the, the, the message he brought to, to us. Um, and just before he left, he ne we didn't know in any, we didn't know what, what we can give back to him, you know, uh, before the final started. And Henny stood up and he just grabbed a cap and he said, gave it to Mr. Mandela, said, Mr. Mandela, there's nothing much we can give, but we'd like to say, <laughs> we, weren't appreciate preparing, yeah. <laughs> we weren't preparing for a we charity, we didn't have time to yeah. get a present. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and then we gave him the cap and he put a cap on and just kept, kept the cap on his head for, through, throughout the whole game and yeah, it was yeah. just amazing to see. And then, of course, the game itself. Uh, I mean, you're up against what, what is, you know, who was referred to as the greatest rugby player of all time, John Olomo, yeah. Fitzpatrick. Uh, and, and in one of the interviews, I, I heard him say that Fitzpatrick was said to Franz Pinner afterwards that uh, in the singing of the anthem, he looked across and he saw tears just rolling down the players' faces. Yeah. And uh, Francois himself said that he didn't sing the anthem because he, he, he just knew this, if he if he started singing it was just going to break open yeah. I mean was that the feel what was your feeling at that stage was there any sense of like um, like a, maybe a, a higher power is with you now now that you've just taken that energy from Madiba oh for sure because uh, you know um, this expression was enough uh, said uh, he mm -hmm. didn't even have to say a word to us in the change room but he did and uh, running on the field was you know with uh, the, that crowd shouting and screaming at, uh, at uh, for us um, we stood there in the, on the line, I mean, waiting for the president to come and onto the field and shake our hands. And um, when he came out of the stadium, and was just was even much worse than it, than we when we ran on the field. Yeah. And so in support, but um, and then uh, he shook his hand. Obviously, he whispered a little uh, good luck uh, word for me in my ears just before uh, he went to the, the New Zealand side, and. Um, I think. What did he, he say? I think what he. Say? Everybody, <laughs> wants to, everybody wants to know. What did he say? You know? It's my secret. <laughs> I was keeping it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, and um, and then uh, uh, I think he more he put a lot of pressure on New Zealand without him knowing, you know, because but it's right. He's a South African. He's our president, and he out his team needs to win, um, because the strategy was obviously if we can win the rugby world cup. Do you think that those New country. Zealand guys stood there and just because we, we a lot I of people said that they looked at this and they thought, yes, Nelson Mandela has just walked over to the South African side. We can't win this. I mean, I obviously think, they didn't. I think win. that's that. But when I don't think they said they thought that they can't win it, but they thought. They were more in awe of him, and then yeah. and I almost forgot, forgot about the rugby in initially uh, because they I were. I would have loved to see him stand in front of them when they were doing the haka. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They would have been the quietest haka ever. Remember <laughs> then, um, then <laughs> we, when we did the haka, anyway, is that uh, that was the first time uh, any team walked towards uh, the. The, the all black uh, side and because uh, Loma was coming forward and then Kubas decided no we yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go and the rest followed yeah. and since then you have to do the the Hakan the one the, the opposing teams must stand on the 10 meter line and not uh, not crossing the halfway line I, I believe that one of the times there also Jonah Loma went up to James Small and said um, I'm going to break you and uh, uh, James Small response was sweet my China sweet <laughs> yeah, that can then be James, but uh, I think uh, the Jama didn't realize it was uh, it was going to be the team that's going to break him yeah. instead of him breaking only one player in our yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, James did go off the field, but the other 14 players were still on the field and uh, Brendan Fender came on the field as well. Today. Kyle, you were in standard two at the time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> was I? I don't even think I was in standard two. You were the World Cup 95. What do you remember? I remember the, the first game against Australia. We, we went to go watch at Newlands. Mm -hmm. It was awesome awesome because i went to Saks just up the road and, yeah. and we you know i think it was uh, pretty much the whole school was going and we took a walk down and it was an amazing amazing atmosphere yeah uh, stage from your point of view 95 world cup um and if you think about uh and let's let's talk a little bit political now if you think about apartheid you think about the fact that i mean if we and we talk so much about club rugby on the show 
and and we now know and we've now exposed it that 95 percent of our clubs were colored or black and never had and our players for that matter as well never had any exposure never had any attention what was going through the minds of the club rugby people out there which is essentially the black and colored players who were playing rugby and here's this white team with one colored black player in and here's nelson mandela I mean, again, he had, uh, we spoke about this before, he had the opportunity to come out of jail after 27 years and be very angry and sort of want to go to war, and he didn't. He, he turned the other way and he said, you know, he's going to unite this country. What was going through the minds of the colored and black players of club rugby at that time? Tepe, I think at that time, and I must be honest, it's my personal feeling was that the, we supported the Springboks, but I had no hope of them beating the All Blacks in the final. When they won the first match at, at Newlands, you know, we were all getting excited. Now something is going to happen and, you know, they're still there because everybody thought Australia would wipe them off the field. Were you already working at the Union at that time? No, I was, uh, I was then a, uh, a teacher. Yeah. But I had taken off three months to help uh, the new World Cup office. Okay. Okay. So you were involved in the process yeah. already, yeah. and uh, so you had a reason already to slightly support South Africa. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I think that moment when Mr. Mandela walked out on that field, it changed millions of people to believe in the Springboks, because the contention was if Mandela, after being in jail for 27 years, yeah. can support the Springboks, who are we? You know, who are we to have to support? Here he's setting the example, a perfect example of forgiveness and everything that he stood for. And when he walked out, I was sitting next between uh, my two good friends, Pat Keen and Theo Clenans, and I said to them, today we are going to win this game. They said, who, what do you, who? The All Blacks. I said, no, South Africa. He said, but you just now said, you know, the All Blacks is good. I said, no. The All Blacks will not win this game, not after what we saw here now. And it was, you know, it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I saw Mandela come to Newlands, and uh, it was my job to just see that, you know, the pathway is clear from, from the helipad mm. to, to where he must go in. And the, the security contingent around him was... You know, the, the serious guys, those, you know, yeah. they don't come near. And there was a 12-year-old, a, a I think 12-year-old uh, white girlie standing there. And she was shouting at him, you know, Mr. Mandela, Mr. Mandela. And they just pushed her aside and he stopped everybody in the tracks. He said, this on. And he walked out of, out of the thing, you know, right in to where she was. Ruffled her hair and said, how are you, my girl? <laughs> That little girl ran down the road and she was shouting at the top of her voice, he touched me, he touched me, he touched me. Yeah. And later in, you know, later on, I reflected on that and thought, how many other lives didn't he touch like that, you know? Yeah. Just a small gesture. And the people around her family and everybody was amazed at this man that broke away from this lot of people that are, you know, walking next to him in front around him. He just mm -hmm. broke away. Stop them and all went there. And that was that was what he was. And that's why today, you know, it's sad that people still don't follow his example. Well I think obviously we're we, we, we there are probably a few uh um this is one of those times. It's a watershed moment. Uh, if, if you think about it, in my opinion, it is a watershed moment that, that there are people out there that have the opportunity right now, not in a week's time. In fact, they had the opportunity over the weekend. And I, I'm, I'm all for freedom of expression and freedom of choice. But we, he came out of jail. People had an opportunity to, to change their mindset. We win the World Cup, and he supports the country. People have an opportunity to change their mindset. He passes away, and once again, we have an opportunity now for people to, without feeling scum or digging their heels in, to quite simply say very easily, I'm not taking off this all-black jersey, and I'm actually putting on the Springbok jersey. This is the time that if you wanted to change, if you wanted to change who you are, without feeling uncomfortable about it, this is the time that you can actually 
get rid of that fern and put on the springbok. Uh, it was Madiba, that uh, Nelson Mandela, who gave up 27 years of his life to make sure that you have a scenario in South Africa right now. Uh, that, 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 that's the reason why that the Springbok emblem still exists, because I think without, without Madiba, it would be gone. It would probably be a protea now. But Madiba wanted this, this badge to stay, Chester. Yes, because obviously, because um, uh, he worked hard at, um, at the Springbok um, emblem because it was symbol, symbol, symbolic to unification of the rugby, uh, rugby mm. uh, nation in, 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 in 1995. If you, uh, it's funny enough, it also was an apartheid, it was uh, obviously separating, separating us as, um, as a country. Yeah. And when Nelson came back uh, out of jail at the 1995 World Cup, it, it uh, unified us again. So <coughs> I think um, in rugby, it will always stand for that now because everybody's working um, accordingly to, to ensure that his legacy will still um, continue. Yeah. Um, well, we all know, you know, he's a man of uh, humanity, you know, and uh, and it's because of that that he unified the, the country. So I think a lot of people wanted to say, listen, you know, the, the Springbok emblem is a, is a symbol of dibur and oppression, mm. and and uh, and he said, no, okay, let's change the way that we think here. Let's look at some of your tributes, folks, that came in on uh, on Facebook, and there you see it now. Ryan Ferrari says, uh, goodbye, Nelson Mandela, true legend, you'll be Miss Tata. Darren Matthew Hendricks, may you rest in peace, Mr. Mandela. You're truly a great inspiration to all of the whole African nation. Jacob, no doubt, says, I liked the speech about black domination, even if I didn't know it all. Not sure what that means. Kenyo Lechlono Mafetse says, rest in peace, Sir Nelson Rolichlachla Mandela, or Rabale Kakahiso Magaka. Okay, excuse my uh, pronunciations. Mark Adams says, Nelson Mandela promoted to the upstairs office. Let's follow in his footsteps. Al Nisha, Fanikak, Pilar, you were a true inspiration to our people, our country, and to the rest of the world. Forever will you be remembered. May your soul rest in peace, Madiba. And Imran Fisser, goodbye, Madiba. Thanks for everything. May your soul rest in peace. We will be missing you. Those are, of course, your tributes that have uh, come in on Facebook, and thank you very much for that. And we see that there are many, many more out there. Of course, we can only read some of them, but there are some nice tributes there. So uh, great to see that we're all thinking of him. And of course, uh, hopefully we'll take his legacy into the future. And when we come back, we'll ask Mr. H about what we did with the clubs not so many years ago, carrying the torch from the cell at uh, uh, Robben Island all the way through to Ellis Park with all the clubs carrying it. I remember that bus trip. It was a long trip. We'll be back with you after that break. Okay, Rugby TV, hello everybody and welcome back. Of course, uh, as I said to you earlier on, you can find us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash KBrugby TV and, and on Twitter at KBrugby TV. My guest on the show this evening, Springbok uh, Sevens Captain Carl Brown, uh, Mr. Herman Abrams, former deputy CEO of Western Bronze Rugby and of course, uh, former World Cup uh, 95 winning uh, player, Chester Williams. So, uh, gentlemen, still great to have you here. Um, Mr. H, just quickly show us that book. Um, I know we, we spoke about this earlier on. There you can see it, folks. It's the 46664, depending on how you want to say it, book. Now, that was the torch relay that we did um, in uh, 2005. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that, because it was an incredible time. We, we just, uh, the guys at Saru came to us and said that, you know, it would be Madiba's 87th birthday. They would like to have a torch run from Robben Island right up to Janice, you must be crazy. How can we run with the thing from here to there? Yeah. And then they said, no, all 14 provinces will run, and we, but we must start it. I think it was, that's the first time that I got involved with uh, all the different departments in Cape Town Municipality, disaster management. I never knew those guys were like, you know, where, and then when they heard that the Premier and some ministers were going with us on the boat to, to Robben Island, it was unbelievable. We I mean, it was a really big thing. I mean, yeah. we, we had there Ahmed Katrada and a number of other political yeah. prisoners were there with us uh, in Madiba Sol. Because we lit the torch in Madiba Sol. Yeah. And then and a few minutes or a few hours before they were going to call it off because the sea was too rough. I remember that. And then we, they, they said, I, I pleaded, with, I said, we, we can't call it off, we must go. They said, you don't understand, you know, you don't understand these things. And then I know Mr. Wakefield, Pat Keane, and those guys bravely got onto the back of the boat, you know, as we left the fair. And then 
once you go out, they meet the first waves. They immediately went back into the pool. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember specifically, uh, you know, because I, I helped you organize part of that. Um, I remember uh, uh, going on the ferry to Robin Island, and, it was, and we left at about half past 10 or so because yeah. we had to wait to see if the seas would calm down. Um, and we had to travel, uh, you know, it was, a, I think, a 45-minute boat trip. And I remember that everybody had packed and I think you put 150 people on that ferry yeah. everybody had been inside and then when you, when you when you so I was right at the back of the boat didn't worry to get a seat we were busy uh, looking after the, the torch and made sure that that was fine but I remember looking at uh, at the city lights as the ferry was moving towards <laughs> the island and that we were looking at the city lights and the waves were so big that the lights would disappear the lights would be gone and then all of a sudden you'd see the city come back and this was the and those ferries are pretty big so you can imagine this, these waves these swells were double the height of of the ferry to cut out it was it was ridiculous the storm I and mean, we could easily have all gone down that night yeah. we lit we lit 12 o'clock i think the night yeah ryan van Rooy and uh, yes he was of course the president of the time. And he lit the, the flame and that that torch uh, was designed here in cape town I, we couldn't find anything that would you know, stay like that, and of course we had to keep it burning yeah. all the way through. From yeah. and then uh, I think uh, as we as we left the, the island, we had to keep it on also. And then there was another problem; they didn't want it to burn on the boat because it was a <laughs> oh problem. Yes. And uh, when we got off, and the Prime Rasul took it, uh, then Premier of Cape Town yes, uh, City. Yeah. Uh, the flame went out for some reason or other and then quickly had to lift it. and nobody had matches around us <laughs> 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 we couldn't find matches but then we, we went off and who, then what was who was the first club because then it started going to the club hamilton's hamilton's was the first hamilton's. of course you uh, went in terms yeah. of the, the yeah, distances yeah, and and the, the hamilton's and then you know villages and uct and yes. paul's bay down and the then, main road then uh, it South came there the to Pr uh, primrose and yeah cities and progress and rocklands and and when we got to athlon somewhere there around about one o'clock in the morning we ran out of the kerosene and uh, the guys of um, rangers yeah uh, they went to go fetch some for us uh, because we left the, the cans on the boat in the excitement you know yeah. and uh, all those things happened and we went right through the night going into play Stellenbosch and, and these were of course the, the club players, club players actually running with the torch the one after the, the other torch, Kales River yeah. all those places yeah, and well, hours yeah. was it all together well, well we got to well, Boland Stadium I think 10 o'clock the morning 10 o'clock the next morning so it was a, a long run yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it was uh, in Kales River run. the fire brigades <laughs> joined us and they went in ahead and uh, but it was fantastic it was incredible I mean there was yeah. police police traffic yeah. was guiding the runners mm. all the way it was and the bus the party bus that went with that was, uh, <laughs> as yeah. the guys finished they just got into the bus and get got off a lot of people went all the way to Boland yeah yeah you know they stayed with us and from Boland in Boland when we got there the whole stadium was filled with kids and you know they all waited there and uh, then we we left a uh, few, one or two guys had the Madiba mask on and the kids were quite excited because they thought it was Madiba himself <laughs> at all. Carl, if we, uh, w what stands out for you about Madiba and how, how will you remember him going forward? Sure, I think that's that's a very difficult thing to put into words. I mean, he's, uh, wow, it, the thing that, that stands out for me most is just uh, how proud we are all to be South Africans and how proud we are to be part of this incredible nation that uh, he helped to unite or, you know, drove forward to unite. and. I mean, the one thing that stood out for me was that it showed that like one man's courage and belief, you know, with with that courage and belief, one man's determination and his dream can be driven forward. It's you know everybody always says that oh, you you can do nothing alone, and it's it, it shows that that one man he, he changed the entire world. Yeah, yeah, he changed the world. It was incredible. And from a Springbok Sevens point of view, as as from a team point of view, you guys going forward. Yeah, I, I don't think we'll ever forget the weekend that we were part of now. It was uh, incredibly emotional from Friday morning till 
till Monday morning, till Sunday night, Monday so morning. So maybe you guys are the next Invictus movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't bank on that, but it was... Uh, you might be getting a phone call from Clint Eastwood. <laughs> maybe part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just Matt Damon, come shadow me yeah. for a couple of weeks. The, the, the good thing, though, is that the, the final team photograph there, there were a number of black players on the, on the, on the uh -huh. team. <laughs> no one's standing behind the pole. And they were, they were the actual game winners, by the way. They were the game winners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, folks, uh, we're going to take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll tell you about the uh, Stormers uh, Super 15 season. Of course, we'll wrap up with, uh, and of course, the new Stormers jersey that's just been launched. And we will um, wrap up with our final thoughts of uh, how we're all uh, celebrating President, uh, former President Nelson Mandela's uh, uh, passing, and of course, his legacy. We'll be back with you after the break. <laughs> So we're just discussing the new Stormers jersey, um, and here it is. Uh, Chesie, you want to show show the Whoa. show the viewers for us what it what looks it like? <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you think? I mean, uh, the, 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 Carl, the you were saying now that, that the also storm the storm uh, stripes on the front now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the so the jersey. Um, uh, yes, I mean, if you look at the new Stormers jersey, you can't really see, but clearly, I mean, we spoke about this a long time ago that that that, that the Western Province brand and the Stormers brand should come together because it used to be that men in black and, and then it became yeah, slightly yeah. blue and then you had the Western Province which is, and I mean we spoke years about saying is integrate these two and just make it one jersey I think in a few years time we're going to see one jersey being the Stormers jersey yeah. but it'll be the Western Province jersey um, and it'll and then you you can have I mean, we'll have to see where all that goes but folks there you can see the the, the new Stormers jersey um, well, this is already out in the stores and uh, of course the away jersey we we don't have the away jersey for you but the away jersey actually has the stormers uh, uh bolt and storm across the front so slightly different slightly more dynamic um the, the bulls jersey of course i would love to have shown it to you in fact i'm showing it to you now you just can't see it um, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's invisible here we go there you see a shot of the jersey um, what do you think do you like that this is the bulls jersey um, <laughs> nothing much in it, um, but yeah, uh, you can see the, you know, uh, the, the sevens jerseys, Carl. You guys are also looking quite funky, dynamic. It looks quite exciting. We, we were chatting about it now, about just trying to create a different kind of identity and a little bit more excitement in the in the, the spectators' jerseys, yeah. and you know, maybe move away from a little bit of the traditional. I think that's exactly what the Stormers did and the Bulls did with the you know the lightning bolt and the camo. The camera look and some people you know are not very interested in it but it's it's great fun it's you know just trying to create something different and and, and uh you know make a new identity for the team yeah talking about the stormers evox advanced nutrition is of course the official sports nutrition supplier to western province rugby and the dhl stormers and this is the favorite uh, protein of the stormers this is the synergy whey protein all right uh, high protein as we've said before high protein is we consider high protein anything like above 80 percent uh anything on 30 percent is not really considered high protein we would say that uh if you want a high protein then you know 80 percent up, up up and above that that's more like a high protein um so if, if you want uh, maximum protein for ma maximum uh, absorption to get maximum muscle mass you probably want to get high protein not low protein because protein is the only thing that really uh, puts on the muscle so if you want to win for yourself a synergy whey protein all you need to do is tell us what's the favorite product sms the name evox to double three two eight oh just tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to western province rugby and the dhl stormers and tell us uh, their favorite product and of course just sms your name and answer congratulations to last week's winner tony george tony walks away with the synergy hamper which is the uh uh, synergy whey protein together with the shaker 600 which uh, i think i have shown you before it uh, takes apart and then it takes apart and then it's got containers and magafters <laughs> and everything in there and then you put it in there and then you put it in there and then you shake it up and that and if you sms now you can win yourself a house as well okay no, that was just a joke you can't really win the house <laughs> synergy whey protein hamper up for grabs double three two eight oh let's take a look now at the stormers fixtures coming up for 2014 and uh, they start off with the uh, cheetahs against the lions uh, playing away their first game that's in bloemfontein and then it's the lions uh, um, uh, this, uh, up against the Lions in Johannesburg and then the first game is against the Hurricanes at uh, Newlands so starting off there I'm not going to go through the entire list there um, but starting off with two away games um, being in Bloemfontein and Johannesburg and then of course our first home game against the Hurricanes at Newlands um, on the 28th of uh, February but the first game for the Stormers is on the 15th of February a number of warm-up games are already being discussed um, Chesey uh, from, a, from a team point of view they're going to go away uh, in, the, in the sort of the first part of their legs. So what sort of impact do you think that's going to have for the players? 
It does have an impact on you as a, as a, as a team, especially if you if you, you, you win if one or two games away, you know you, into, into, you can get into it. But if you lose all of them, then you, you struggle to come home and you have to win then home games as well. And, and throughout the Super Rugby, we've, we've been proven that you don't win all the games, you know, and yeah. you, you can, and sometimes you win all the games, you win, win say 90% of it, then the most important game, the final, you lose. Yeah. Um, so you would rather have a build up slowly for um, maybe have a, a home game where a first home game, we can just build up from the next game to another game. And uh, when it comes to, especially uh, domestic wise, it's not a way really. So, I mean, the Stormers go to the Lions. Yeah. There's uh, just as many uh, Stormers supporters as the Lions. Um, we're, in a, we're unfortunately running a little bit of tight time here. Um, just on a, on a final note, any words uh, from you? For from someone who who was so intimately involved with with Madiba, any final words to the yes, fans out there? Yes, I'd like to say, you know, just the final thing for me is just to say that uh, to the world now, uh, to, to the world now, you was Nelson Mandela, and to me, he's the world. Ah, oh, that's 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 uh, sweet, really. Uh, Mr. H, final words from you in terms of your thoughts and memories of Madiba and to well, the fans. If every South African can just be one percent, what Madiba was. This world will be a fantastic place to live in. Carl Brown, congratulations once again on beating the All Blacks as uh, Francois Pinard and his team did in 95. You are our Springbok Sevens captain. Congratulations on that. And um, any final words from you regarding Madeba and your fans out there? People are watching you guys so closely now. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think we'd just like to thank him for being such an incredible example of uh, you know the, the true kind of human being that everybody would like to be and 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 for making South Africa you know the, the most amazing place to live it's yeah. you know we, we couldn't be more honored and privileged to to be in this country and and be part of a special special nation like this listen Carl I know you're also very busy uh, so thanks for joining us and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the show uh, soon uh, where do you guys go next uh, Las Vegas uh, 24th to the 26th of no, no. January that's terrible Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. get, Vegas. Get yourself over there. Right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll bring the Cape Rugby TV seven side, actually, back to it. We'll pull them across there. <laughs> right, folks, that's a wrap of the Cape Rugby TV show. From my side, Club Rugby would be not be where it is today if it wasn't for uh, Madiba, which means we would not have had this show. We hope that you will take his legacy forward as well as some of his moral values onto the rugby field and into the communities out there. From a Cape Rugby TV point of view, from our panel's point of view, our thoughts are with the nation. Our thoughts are with uh, former President Madiba's uh, family. We wish you a pleasant evening, and we'll see you again next week. Same time. Same time.